All right, I would like to give you another tip as you're teaching. Now, this tip is really important and it really helps explain a lot of words and we're going to be circling back to this concept a lot. But the tip is to teach all of the vowel sounds. Now, this is just like the other things, teach all of the phonograms sounds. But right now I wanna focus on vowels. So this says a, a, a. All right, that says three sounds. Until I learned um, some of the Orton-Gillingham phonograms, I thought this said a and a, and I was missing the sound a. We'll show you how important the sound a is in a little bit. This says a, e. This says i, i, e, y. That's right, it says four sounds. I, I, E, Y. One more time. I, I, E, Y. Are any of those sounds new to you? If they are, every time you've seen them in a word, you've thought or maybe told others that that's an exception. How about this? This says A, O, U. That's right, it says three sounds. A, O, U. This one says a, u, u, u. That's right, it says four sounds. Let's say them together. A, u, u, u. This says ya, i, i, e. Let's say them together. Ya, i, i, e. That's right, it says four sounds. Let's look a little bit more closely at vowels. Vowels in English, I've found many people feel very confused about, so I want to help explain how vowels work in English. So to begin, what is a vowel? Most of us have learned that the vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. And some of us have learned, so most of us have learned that there are five vowels in English. Some of us have learned that it's A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. So are there six vowels? And why is it sometimes Y? I always wondered that. Well, what is a vowel? It is much more helpful than just trying to memorize all the vowels to understand what is a vowel. Here's the definition of a vowel. A vowel is a sound you can sing. It is a sound that you can make louder and softer, like this. Ah. Uh, notice you can make it louder and softer. And your mouth is open. It's unblocked. You don't have any, you don't, your teeth aren't blocking it or your lips or your tongue. It's, it's an unblocked sound. So how many vowels, if we use this definition of a vowel, are there really in English? English has 50 vowel sounds. Wow, 15. So English is a vowel rich language. We have 15 vowel sounds. In addition, in English, many vowel sounds have multiple options for spelling. So let's look at the sound A. We've already learned that it can be spelled as a, 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 a two letter A that you may use at the end of English words. A, two-letter A that you may not use at English words, or E at A. So these are just four of the spellings of the sound A. So how many written vowels are there really in English? There are 28. So if we have been thinking that there are only five or six vowels in English, we have learned an oversimplified version of the language. And I wanna be really, really careful here and just emphasize this again and again. If you've been teaching that there are five or six vowels, that's because that's how you were taught. And we can't teach what we don't know. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, we didn't know that. But English has 28 vowels and unwritten vowels. And understanding how English works is extremely helpful to understanding how English words are decoded and spelled. What is a consonant then? If, if a vowel is a sound you can sing, you can make it louder and softer and your mouth is open, what's a consonant? 
A consonant is a sound you cannot sing. For example, th, th, I can't sing it. It's a sound that cannot be made louder and softer. Th, 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 I can't make it louder and softer. And it is a sound that is blocked by the tongue, lips, or teeth. Mm. See, my lips are blocking it. Mm. So now that we know the definition, we can test if sounds are vowel sounds or consonant sounds. And by the way, five-year-olds and six-year-olds love to test sounds. So let's try this. Shh, can I sing it? Shh, nope. Is something blocking it? Shh, yep. Can I make it louder or softer? Shh, nope. So it is a consonant. Now, if we have a phonogram that says more than one sound, we need to test all of the sounds. So let's test the sound ah. Ah, I can sing it and I can make it louder or softer and my mouth is open so it is a vowel. How about a? A, 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 I can sing it, I can make it louder or softer so it is a vowel. Ah, 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 ah. it is a vowel because I can sing it, make it louder or softer and my mouth is unblocked. All three sounds are vowel sounds. B. Is this a consonant or vowel? It's a consonant. Why? It's blocked. B. I can't make it louder or softer. Here's a hint. Sometimes students will do this. B. <laughs> what are they doing? They're adding the vowel. Uh. Uh. So you want to isolate this as B. B. And that's also true when you're practicing the phonogram sounds. Okay, I always wondered why sometimes why? Well, this says four sounds, so we need to test them all. How about the first sound, y, 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 y? That is a consonant. How do we know that? It's blocked and I can't sing it. How about e, 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 vowel? I, vowel, and e, e, it's a vowel. So this has one consonant sound and three vowel sounds. It is both a consonant and a vowel. And we know which one it is based on what it's saying in the word. Okay, just to really challenge what we've been taught oftentimes about English, how about the word onion? What is the, what is the I in onion, a consonant or a vowel? Well, in onion, it's saying y, onion. It is a consonant. Did you know that? Sometimes I is a consonant and it says y. All right, let's read the short vowel sounds together again. Remember, the short sounds are the first sounds and they're marked with this little curve that's called a breve. You'll see this used in dictionaries as well. A, e, i, a, a, i. Now, the long sounds are marked with a line. That line is sometimes called a macron, as in something that's big. So a mac uh, the long sounds are the names. Let's read the names. A, e, i, o, u. And then the long sound of Y is actually I, the long sound, uh, I. So let's read it again. A, E, I, O, U, and then I. Okay, let's talk about long vowel sounds. So most of us are familiar with these long vowel sounds, but what is the most common reason for a single letter vowel to say it's long sound. What is your guess? Just pause and think. What do you think is the most common reason? When I survey teachers, most people say silent final E. Okay, this is a reason for a single letter vowel to say it's long sound, but it is not the most common. The reason that most of us think it's the most common is because for many of us, it's the only reason we were taught. The most common reason is represented in these words. And when I teach students spelling rules, I love to have them discover the rules because as they discover it through word experiments, they internalize it more quickly. So what's the difference between bag and bagel, bend and bee, tot, total, hum, and human? 
The vowel is saying its long sound at the end of the syllable. The rule goes like this. A, E, O, U usually say their long sounds at the end of the syllable. Let's say it together. A, E, O, U usually say their long sounds at the end of the syllable. This rule explains high frequency words like he, be, we, she. And once we've taught this rule, we've unlocked even more of the high frequency words. We now can decode 55% of them. Imagine the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of additional words that the student can read with this knowledge. Now the rule says A, E, O, U usually say their long sounds at the end of the syllable. But do you notice this is only about A, E, O, U. What about I and Y, the other single letter vowels? Let's compare the phonograms I and Y. I says I, I, E, Y. And Y says Y, I, I, E. Notice they both say four sounds and they both same, say the same sounds. With the phonogram I, I is the most common sound. That's why it's first. With Y, Y is the most common sound. That's why it's the first sound. These phonograms also have an interesting relationship in English. They are related to this rule. English words do not end in I, U, V, or J. We saw that with the multi-letter phonograms A, two-letter A that you may use at the end of English words, and A, two-letter A that you may not use at the end of English words. In addition, when you hear the sound I at the end of the word, um, it says of a, when you hear the word, the sound I at the end of a one-syllable word, it says I. Here's the rule. When a one-syllable word ends in a single vowel Y, it always says I. Notice, you're not going to spell it with an I because English words don't end in I. You'll spell it with a Y, I, I, E. What does Y say at the end of multi-syllable words? Well, Y says it's E sound um, at the end of a multi-syllable word. The whole rule actually is the most accurate. It says Y says E only in an unstressed syllable at the end of a multi-syllable word. And you see this in many, only, very, any study. So we don't have time to get into how the syllable stress changes what Y says at the end of the word, but that is explained um, in Uncovering the Logic of English, and you can find that explanation elsewhere. All right, we have been learning a lot of phonograms and a lot of spelling rules. So I, again, just want to encourage you that if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, it's because you are drinking from a fire hose. I mean, we're in about an hour, you have learned a massive amount of new content about the English language. So I wanna tell you a story though, when someone's learning this content systematically and on a regular basis, instead of just woof all at once, how this impacts their lives. So this story um, was something that someone sent and emailed to us. It says, my brother has just turned 20 and is intellectually impaired. His school gave up teaching him more than a handful of sight words, and he had zero clue what people did with words in general. He never tried to read because it was all magic to him. So she then began to teach him uh, the phonograms and spelling rules, and they worked very, very slowly at it. So when he knew all the sounds of A through Z and just a handful of multi-letter phonograms and just a couple of spelling rules, something amazing happened, she said. He realized that words were various combinations of letters and that letters were sounds written on paper. That one epiphany that how a word sounds when you say it is directly related to what it looks like on paper opened the world of reading to him. They have continued to learn the phonograms and spelling rules, and it, she says they are going very slow and steady for this young man. She said, but he can now read and spell well enough to converse with his friends and family through text and to navigate a shopping list. 
She said, I don't know whether we'll ever get through all the rules and phonograms, but the difference this has made to his life is immeasurable. So that's just to help you understand. You can move through this content slowly at the pace of the student, but it is key to unlocking the words. So let's take a moment and practice all of the phonogram sounds we've learned up to this point. The reason we're doing this is to help you develop a little bit of mastery with this content. I'll say the sounds, try to say them with me, and then I'll leave a pause so you can repeat them as well. Ya, e, I, e. A, two letter A that you may not use at the end of English words. A, U, U, U. K, S. U, U. Er, the er of her. G, J. E, double E. Er, the er first. N. S, Z. Ow, O. K. E, E. A, A, A. R. W. Sh. Qua. U, uh, o, o, or ch, k, sh, e, i, e, ya, a, two letter a that you may not use at the, or sorry, a, two letter a that you may use at the end of English words, e, e, a, a, O, U. Excellent. All right, you can always revisit this part of the video to practice these. And I would encourage you, as you're introducing phonograms to your students, teach all of the sounds right from the beginning. These are so important to helping students to be able to decode in English without generating unnecessary exceptions. Let's look at a few more spelling rules. How many of you have taught word patterns such as old, told, hold, cold, and gold? So that word pattern helped students to unlock and to be able to read and spell these words. But what about the word both? And how does that compare to cloth? What about most and almost? And wait a minute, what about lost and cost? What is really going on here? The rule that explains what you're seeing is I and O may say I and O when followed by two consonants. So let's look at that. Notice it's saying O when followed by an O and a D, old, told, hold. It's saying O when followed by the TH, which is written with two consonants, both. But it's saying ah in cloth. I and O may say I or O. Um, so I and O may say I and O when followed by two consonants. And it says may. So it doesn't always. So we'll have to try both sounds, but it may. Notice this is also true about I. We have child and wild. But what do we have in build and guild? The short I sound. And by the way, a little hint with build, be use a multi-letter phonogram that says b. So build. What does it say in find, kind, behind, and mind? It says i before those two consonants. But what does it say in wind and window? It says i. So let's say the rule again. i and o may say i and o when followed by two consonants. How many of you have learned this rule? Cap becomes cape, pet, peat, rip, ripe, rob, robe. What's going on here? 
The vowel says its long sound because of the E. This is a commonly taught rule, and it is important to teach this rule. So when we've taught the following, the rules that we've learned to this point and the phonograms that we've learned to this point, every single one of the words in green becomes decodable. That's right, these are now decodable. They're not sight words, they're not words the kids need to guess at, they can decode them. We can now explain 66%, two thirds of the high frequency words. And again, we have the tools to read and spell hundreds of thousands of additional words. Let's learn another multi-letter phonogram. This says aw as in August, author, aunt, and fault. Let's say aw together, aw. The vowel says it's long sound because of the E. I want to revisit this rule. The vowel says it's long sound because of the E. This rule is important. However, and I want you to listen closely to this, this rule only explains 50% of words that have a silent final E. That's right, it leaves 50% of the silent final E words as exceptions if you don't teach the other reasons for a silent final E in English. So this is one of the reasons why you may feel like you're saying that's an exception all the time if you've taught an incomplete phonics or if you know an incomplete phonics. In reality, there are nine reasons for a silent final E in English. Not one or two, but nine. So we've already learned the reason for a silent final E in have, give, solve, mob, and comprehensive. Why do we need an E in the word have? English words do not end in V. So we need to add an E to make this have. That's right. If you hear the sound V at the end of the word, you must add a silent final E. So I have a story about this rule that really impacted me. I was asked to speak to a group of honor students at our local high school. They were doing a project on literacy. And the teacher asked me to come in and share what I did um, with my work in literacy. And I was given two minutes to explain the work that I do uh, teaching phonograms and rules. So I said this, I said, I teach rules like this. English words don't end in V. Every time you hear a V at the end of the English word, you need an E. For example, that's why there's an E in have, give, mauve. I am not joking, a young man, an honor student, jumped out of his chair and said, why didn't someone tell me that? <laughs> so he's a very successful student, but the reality is when we don't teach how English really works, we're all left guessing. And when we teach this rule, a young student now has the solution to how to decode these words and how to spell them. Why do we have a silent final E in true, blue, value, continue, and residue? That's right, English words do not end in U. This rule, English words do not end in V or U, is the second most common reason for a silent final E. And this rule unlocks the word have. So this picture, I really, really like it because neither the man who's drilling the words or the young um, student look happy. Because when the student misreads have as have over and over and over, it is very discouraging for everyone. It's heartbreaking. But what does this man need to say to solve this problem? All he needs to say now is English words don't end in V, add an E. This says have. Why do we have a silent final E in voice, sentence, since, and peace? What would this say? You're right, it would say voic. I love to see how you're applying the rules that you learned earlier in this presentation to solve new puzzles about English words. The C says because of the E. Why do we have a silent final E in large? What would this say? You've got it, it would say larg without it, larg, because the G says j because of the E. 
This is the third. The C says and the G says D because of the E is the third most common reason for a silent final E in English. All right, here's a really interesting one that's not commonly known. Why do we have a silent final E in house? Well, here's the thing. An S at the end of English words is a, is a marker that the word is plural. But is house plural? It's singular. It's one house. So when a singular word ends in an S, we add a silent final E to keep it from looking like a plural noun. Why do we have a silent final E in goose? That's right, goose means one, it's singular. So to keep this singular word from ending in an S and looking plural, we add a silent final E. Why do we have a silent final E in mouse? That's right, to keep it from looking like a plural verb. So we add an E to keep singular words that end in the letter S from looking like plural nouns or looking like verbs with a verb ending. So there are nine reasons for a silent final E in English, and I am sorry to say that I can't teach you all of them today, but I hope that if you see a silent final E in a word, you ask yourselves, why is it there? And you go and you try to look up the reason for the silent final E in that word. The very last reason that we teach for a silent final E is called an unseen reason. And this reason, we no longer know why the E is there. And by the way, this is a very, very tiny percentage of English words. What we're trying to say with this is that there probably was a reason it was added and we no longer know why. There are three high frequency words, were, there, and where, that have an unseen reason. Okay, it is time to apply what we have been learning to analyze the spelling of new words. The next word is serve. We will serve dinner soon. Go ahead and say serve. Excellent. Let's sound it out. Er, use the er of her. V. Okay, what will we need at the end? Silent final E, you're right. All right, go ahead and write serve, sounding it out as you write it. Let's sound it out together. S, er, v. Silent final E. Why do we, oh, how will we mark this word? We'll underline the er. And why do we have a silent final E in serve? Excellent. English words do not end in V. Therefore, we need to add an E. The next word is because. Because I said so. <laughs> because. This is one of our hundred uh, most frequently used words. Go ahead and say because with me. How many syllables? Hmm, hmm. Two. All right, we will say to spell be cause. What will we say to spell? Say it with me, be cause. Let's sound out the first syllable, be, b, e. Let's sound the second syllable, cause, k. Use a k, s, aw. This is two letter aw that we just learned that you may not use at the end of English words. Z, use a s, z and silent final E. Got it? Go ahead and write B cause, sounding it out as you write it. All right, help me to write it. The first syllable is B, B, E. The second syllable is cause, K, A, Z. Silent final E. Okay, how will we mark this word? All right, first of all, we'll put a line or a macron over the E to show that it said it's long sound. Why did the E say it's long sound and because? A, E, O, U usually say they're long sounds at the end of the syllable. And there it is, because, right at the end of the syllable. We'll underline the A. Ah, and what sound of s, s do we hear? The second. Now, why do we have a silent final E in because? That is right, because 
It's there to keep it from ending in an S and looking like a plural word. So because. I hope this helps you to see this word in a new way, to understand that there are really reasons for the English spellings. Let's try the word energy. Uh, the light bulb needs energy to glow. How many syllables in energy? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Three. We will say to spell N er G. What will we say to spell? N er G. All right, let's sound it out together. The first syllable is N. E, N. Mm. The second syllable is er. Use the er of her. The third syllable is G. J. Use a g, j, e. Use a y, i, i, e. Go ahead and write n, er, g, sounding it out as you write it. And now help me to write it. The first syllable is n, e, n. The second syllable is er, er, the er of her. The third syllable is g, j, e. Okay, how will we mark this word? N er G. We'll underline the er, and the y yeah, i i e said its fourth sound. And actually, I'm missing a marking here. Do you see it? I'm missing a two over the j, because g j said its second sound. And why did the g say j? G may soften to j when followed by an e i or y. And here it is. It's before a y, so it says j. E -n -er -j -e, energy. Once again, I hope that this is just helping you to see these words in a whole new way, to understand that there's a reason for these spellings and that they are decodable. All right, the next word is square. The cracker is a square. Go ahead and say square. Let's sound it out together. S qua. A, er, silent final E. All right, go ahead and write square, sounding it out as you write it. And help me to write it. S, qua, a, er, silent final E. All right, how will we mark this word? We'll underline the qua. We'll put a line over the A because it said its second sound and we'll double underline the silent final E. Why do we have a silent final E in square? It makes the vowel A say its long sound. Let's read it. S, qua, A, er, square. Excellent. Okay, let's make a little pivot back to vowels. So we've learned about short sounds and long sounds. Short and long vowel sounds are commonly taught, and that is really important. But we also need to teach the broad vowel sounds. Now, for many of you, you've never even heard of a broad vowel, and that's understandable because it's not commonly taught. But I want to show you why this is so important. So A says A, 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 A short, A is long, Aw is broad. Now, when you say aw, notice your mouth is forward and round. Aw. So, this uh, is a really interesting exercise. I categorized some of the fry words, or in this case, the first 100 fry words. So, the words in the list under a are in the first 100 words as, at, have, had, and has, am. Notice there's one in, those high, in that high frequency word list of the top 100 words that says A. But there are three just in the first 100 words that say A, ah, all water called. So A ah is a very important word. It's found in many, many hundreds of English words. And if we don't teach it, they all become exceptions. All right, this says A, ah, O, oh, U. A, short, O, long, U, broad. Notice again, U. My mouth is forward, U, and round. Broad sounds are forward and round vowel sounds. 
Now look at this. If you teach A and O, it helps to decode these five fry words. But if you skip O, just the, the ones in the list there, there's five of them that say O alone in the first 100 words. In other words, if you skip the broad sound O, you are generating hundreds or thousands of exceptions for the student that they have to skip over, say, I don't understand, or English is crazy. But these vowels have short, long, and broad sounds. Let's look at this vowel. This has four sounds, a, uh, u, u, u. All right, a uh is short, u is long. What's going on with u? U is a second long sound. So notice, in a word like cute, you hear u, k, u, t. But in a word like flute, you hear u, not u. In some words, the long sound of u drops the y. So instead of u, it's just u. Because try to say flute uh, with a u, flute. You would trip over it, so you drop that y sound. All right, so to recap that, we have a, uh, short, u, long, u, long, and then we have u. Uh. Many people struggle to hear the u uh sound, but it notice u, uh, it's forward and round. And actually in speech, in natural speech, we can hear it really clearly because most people can hear the difference between I put the ball and I put the ball on the shelf. So I put, short sound, the ball into the hole, and I put the ball on the shelf, broad sound, round, uh, uh. All right, these are the fry words with the sound uh. If you skip these, keep in mind, again, it's going to generate thousands of exceptions if we, or if we skip the broad sounds, but put, full, pulled, push, carefully, beautiful, Here's another way to look at the importance of the broad sounds. Um, I just, I liked categorizing lists and thinking about this. These are the Dolch words that use broad, um, the broad vowel sounds, a, u, and u. Uh. Again, all of these would be exceptions or heart words if you're not teaching the broad sounds. So when we add in all the concepts we've learned so far, and we're, we're only like an hour and a half into this presentation, these are all the words that are decodable. 76%, amazing. And you will be able to look at these words now and explain why they're spelled that way, why they're read and decoded that way. Okay, let's tackle the big subject of schwa. <laughs> so many people are very, very confused about sh what schwa is. And I wanna be clear, schwa and a broad sound are very different. So we have the short sound, a, ah, we have the long sound, a, ah, we have the brown, broad sound, a. Ah. Schwa in these words says, uh, just like the word uh, or was, or what. Uh, about. It's saying uh in these words. O oh, also has a schwa sound that says uh is in of, other, some, come. And notice how many words are saying the schwa sound. These are just the first 100 fry words, by the way. So what is schwa? I want to give you an in-depth understanding of what schwa is, and I wanna give you tools for how to teach schwa even to a five or six-year-old emerging reader because schwa is extraordinarily important, and when we don't understand schwa, we generate uh, hundreds of thousands of exceptions. That is because schwa is the most common sound in English. Did you catch that? Schwa is the most common sound in English, and it is key to eliminating exceptions. What is schwa? Schwa is a distorted vowel sound in an unstressed syllable. 
So that's the technical definition for schwa, a distorted vowel in an unstressed syllable. And maybe you feel like, gosh, I don't even know what that really means. Okay, let's dig into this so you do understand what it means and you have the tools to teach it. So let's go back to what we learned about consonants and about vowels. Which sound, a consonant sound or a vowel sound, can you make louder and softer? You can make vowels louder and softer. Well, how do you make a vowel louder or softer? So here's the thing. If we say the word help and we begin very, very quietly, and then we say it louder and louder and louder, how do we do that? Remember, the only sound in here that's going to be made louder is the vowel E, eh, because I can't make it louder or softer. I can't make it louder or softer. So what makes this word louder is the vowel E. Eh. So let's, uh, let's start it very quiet and then let's get louder. And go ahead and do this activity with me and let's feel our mouths. Help, 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 help. Do you see? My mouth gets bigger as it gets louder. Likewise, it gets smaller as I say things softer. So when you say something loud, you open your mouth really large. And when you say something quiet, you say the vowels and you open your mouth very small. Okay, this is an experiment you can do with young kids and helping them understand how you make a vowel louder and softer is helpful to understanding schwa. So I like to tell students this, and this is how I explain schwa to a five-year-old or a six-year-old. And actually I think it's helpful as adults and as teachers. Schwa is a lazy sound. And when you are lazy, do you wanna move? No, I just wanna sit there. I don't wanna move at all. I wanna move as little as possible when I feel lazy. So there are some vowels sometimes in English that are lazy. And when they are lazy, your mouth is not opening very big. It's like, you don't wanna move your mouth because your mouth feels lazy. All right, can you already picture talking to young students about this? They can feel how they might talk if they're lazy. <laughs> and when your mouth is lazy or the vowel is lazy, it's said more quietly than the other vowel sounds in the word or the sentence. So let's test some vowel sounds to see if the sounds are lazy or not. And what I mean by that is, do I need to open my mouth very far? How about this sound, uh, uh, uh? I hardly need to move. It is lazy, uh. How about ah, ah, ah? Notice I actually have to drop my mouth open. This is not a lazy sound. How about a, a, a? Notice I have to open my mouth, I have to, it's not lazy. How about e, e, I pull my mouth back, not lazy. How about e, e, hmm, that's interesting, e, I barely need to move to say e. This can also be what I call a lazy sound. So here's the thing about schwa, any vowel. Remember, there are 15 vowel sounds in English and even more ways to write them. And when I say any, I mean any vowel may say one of the schwa sounds, a uh, or e. Eh. So any vowel in English can be lazy. But why is it sometimes a schwa? Or why is the vowel lazy? It's because English has rhythm. English is a stressed timed language. Syllables have various amounts of stress in English. So let's look at this word seldom. So we can see that it has two syllables because it has two vowels. And you'll notice the first syllable, sel, is said very clearly. You hear the e. But that second syllable, dumb, seldom, you hear an a uh sound. You're not articulating the vowel clearly. Sel is stressed, dumb is unstressed. The way we help students with 
um, schwa sounds in spelling analysis is, is, is to give them the vowel sound clearly. So I will say, say to spell sell dom. Say that with me, sell dom. I'll stress both syllables equally and I'll say the vowels clearly. So which syllable is stressed in the word adapt? Notice the first syllable, uh, is lazy, it's a schwa sound. The second syllable, dap, do you hear the a uh, clearly? It is stressed. We will say to spell a dapt. What will we say to spell? A dapt. Notice we will equally stress the vowels for say to spell, and once again, we will apply this in spelling analysis. And why did I choose the long sound a? Well, a, e, o, u usually say their long sounds at the end of the syllable. And here, that a is at the end of the syllable. How about frozen? Notice, many people know that the schwa sound says uh, but in frozen, it says i, eh, frozen, i, eh, frozen. Again, it's being a lazy or schwa vowel. And so that first syllable, fro, is stressed. What will we say to spell? We will say to spell fro, Zen will articulate and stress each vowel equally. How about about? How will we, uh, which syllable is stressed? About, the bout is stressed. We will say to spell a bout. Again, schwas are not exceptions. And the interesting thing about schwa, right, is it is the most common sound in English. So if you're going to call the most common sound in English an exception, well, that kind of leaves us with a problem, doesn't it? In addition, English is not the only language with schwas. Many, many languages have the schwa sound. I used to teach adult um, literacy students, and I taught many students from Eastern Europe. And after I learned about schwa, and after I learned about say to spell, I was speaking to one of my former Russian students. And I was telling her about how much I wish I had known this. And she looked at me really quizzically and she said, well, Russian has unstressed vowel sounds and we say to spell them. I don't see what's so revolutionary about that. <laughs> and I just remember being like, oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So this idea of an unstressed, not clearly articulated vowel, this happens in any language that has varying amounts of stress in syllables. And this idea of saying to spell is a way to both create an auditory picture, but as you'll see in a few minutes, is really revealing what the vowel is. Any vowel, let's say the rule together, any vowel may say one of the schwa sounds, a uh, or i, in an unstressed syllable. So how do they determine which vowel to use? Well, we have the word human. Notice the a is unstressed, human. It sounds like an i. So we would say to spell hu-man. Can you think of any related words where you hear the a ah clearly? What about humanity? or the word man. So notice they chose an a ah in human because it's related to humanity and man. And in those words, the syllable man is stressed. So human is not an exception, it's a schwa vowel. How about president? We hear an uh, president for the I. But can you think of a related word where you hear the I clearly? preside. That's right, preside, president. So when that syllable stress changes, you can often hear the, the schwa vowel clearly. So here's a thought for you that's really, really important about English and is really true about all written languages. English spelling is a balance of sounds or the phonograms that we've been learning and meaning. So Someone could have said, hey, every time we hear a schwa sound, let's write it with a different character. But notice, if you did that, human and humanity would be spelled differently, but they're related in meaning. President and preside would be spelled differently, but they're related in meaning. 
Also, keep in mind when we, uh, when someone created or creates written um, systems for language, it's always based on a spoken language that already exists. So we already said human and humanity. And so when we decided how to spell them, there's this balance that's happening between meaning or morphology and sounds or phonics. All right, there's one more place a schwa can say, it's a, a vowel can say it's schwa sound. Let's read this together again, and reading it with me will help you to internalize the rules as well. Any vowel may say one of the schwa sounds, a or i, in an unstressed syllable or an unstressed word. Interesting, what is an unstressed word? Words in English sentences also have varying amounts of stress. So in this sentence, the boy ran in the street. Which words are said more loudly? You can actually feel your mouth open more. The boy ran in the street. You can feel your mouth open larger for boy ran street because you're saying the vowels in these words more clearly. The reason you're saying these words more clearly is they're the content words. They carry the heart of the meaning. And then there are other uh, vowels in the sentence that are unstressed. They're said as a. Uh. So let's look at this word, the. It has an unstressed vowel because the in English isn't carrying meaning. It's part as much meaning as the verbs and the nouns and the um, adjectives and the other parts of the sentence. The is an article. It's important for the grammar of the sentence, but it is an unstressed word. So what will we say to spell? We will say to spell the, Y, A, E, O, U, usually say their long sounds at the end of the syllable, the. But it's saying it's, it's lazy sound, the. Now, some of you are maybe thinking, I don't, I don't really get it, but you already do this. If you get to the end and you want to emphasize it, what do you say? You say, the end. Did you notice that? You say, the end when you're stressing the vowel sound. <laughs> that is super interesting because it shows how the stressed vowels are articulated clearly. We say, the end when we're stressing it, and we say, the end if we're not stressing it, the meaning of the end. So when we teach students to read this word, we teach them to read it as the. We talk to them about it's lazy, it doesn't want to move, it says the. And here's a tip for you. If a student is reading a sentence and they read, the boy ran down the street, as they're an emerging reader, is, are they comprehending the meaning? Absolutely. They're just articulating every vowel with equal stress. And that is absolutely okay. As they become more fluent, they'll begin to replace the with the, and it'll be just fine. But they will have the tools and they'll understand a concept that is the most common sound in English. And this is not an exception to the English language. Here's another article. It says a, uh, right? We commonly say a, uh, but we will say to spell a. So let's say this rule again. Any vowel may say one of the schwa sounds, a uh, or i, in an unstressed syllable or an unstressed word. And again, schwa is the most common sound in English, so please teach your students about lazy vowels. One of the things I like to do or like to suggest is that you collect a poster of words with lazy vowels and you practice reading them. They're all around us. And that is why the sound a uh, is not included with every vowel because it would need to be one of every uh, of the phonogram sounds for every single vowel. Instead, we think of the vowels as stressed and we then understand that sometimes they're lazy. They're just, we're not opening our mouths very big or saying it very clearly. Okay, so for many students, just learning about schwa they will be able to read wonder, woman, other, another, mother. But if you look closely, in each of these words, the O is in a stressed syllable, not an unstressed syllable. 
And words like wonder and woman and another are actually, or mother, are content words, they're nouns. So they're not unstressed words in the sentence. What is going on here? If we look at the history of English, written English began and was uh, communicated to others through by scribes. And as scribes began to write words like mother, wonder, brother, love, they noticed something. There were lots of up and down straight lines in these words. And people were not able to read them very easily. So they replaced the sound uh in these words with an o. Once again, the thing that these words have in common is all these letters like m and t and w that have lots of straight up and down lines and v. So I like to say for people to say to spell mother, so we'll exaggerate it, and we'll say to spell one, we'll exaggerate it, and what this is following is O may, uh, may also say a uh, in a stressed syllable next to a W, T, H, M, N, or V. And I, with a young student, I'll just tell them that sometimes O is always lazy, or sometimes O is lazy next to a W, T, H, M, N, or V, and it'll say a uh, as in woman or mother. All right. Let's review all of the phonograms that we've learned to this point. Are you ready? Once again, I will say the sounds and I'll give a pause so that you can say them after me. Y, I, I, E. A, two letter A that you may not use at the end of English words. A, U, U, U. Ooh, you. Er, the er of her. G, j. E, double e. Er, the er of first. N. S, z. Ow, o. E, E, A, A, O, R, W, S, Q, K, U, U, O, O, R, Ch, K, S, E, I, E, Y. A, two letter A that you may use at the end of English words. E, E, A. A, O, U. 